All right, so I told you, um, well, I told all my friends that I was going to do a video on something that I wanted to do to my house for my internet. And one of the problems that I'm starting to have is with IoT, that's Internet of Things. It's all of those um, internet connected things all over your house, like light bulbs and <clears throat> security systems, refrigerators, you name it, just about everything in your house is connected to the internet. Um, but all those devices go back and talk to foreign countries, mostly China. And um, what I want to do is I want to separate those devices <clears throat> from connecting to those foreign countries while at the same time having access to my local network. So like any other uh, router, you can create a guest network. Uh, if you go into your wireless router and you look for creating a guest network, you can uh, create that for all your IOT devices or for guests. They'll have internet connectivity, but in most cases, um, how can I put this? You, you don't think they tell you it's not connecting to your local network, but if you know how to, you can go in and ping between devices, between networks. They're not on, um, what would be considered a VLAN. They're just kind of like separated, but not separated. <clears throat> so what I want to do is I want to completely separate them. I'd like to put them in VLANs and physically separate those two or logically separate those two networks so that they cannot talk with each other unless I allow it. Uh, this, which I'm a big fan of Ubiquity Networks, uh, I have uh, Unify access points throughout my house, but I don't have a controller. So I run the controller through my computer. This is a Ubiquity Networks, what's called a dream machine. Now there's a dream router, which is a Wi-Fi 6 router. Um, it, I think it also has um, guess, a guest network in it, but it doesn't have a security gateway and it doesn't have uh, where you can actually create VLANs. This is a Wi-Fi router with a managed switch and a security gateway. But the other thing it also has on it is VPN capability. Um, one another thing that we've been doing, uh, talking about doing is my wife may go on a trip overseas. I don't want her having to use a local network if she's got to access her bank or anything like that. I don't want her to have to do any kind of private communications locally in Europe or France or whatever country she's going to go to. Or me, if I decide to go somewhere. This has a VPN built into it and you can put the a client onto your machine and then she could connect to this from overseas and have a secure communications to be able to do any kind of private things. Now she could still access websites or check weather and stuff like that while she's over there using the local network. That's not a big deal. But when it comes to private things, banking, shopping and stuff like that, I'd rather she be secure and this will allow her to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show how to set this thing up how to create multiple networks. This allows you to create up to four Wi-Fi networks, um, how to secure it. And I might even go into the VPN portion. I haven't, I haven't really looked into it and how it's done, but uh, I got this used because these are getting hard to find because they're sold out. As soon as they come in stock, they're gone. Uh, that's, how, that's how good they are. That's how, how people, how much people like them. 
Uh, I don't really know how good it is, but every Ubiquity device I've ever had has been extremely dependable. I've never had a problem with them. So some people may have, I haven't. Uh, I have an old uh, D-Link, I think it's a D-Link PoE switch upstairs in my little comm closet. Um, I've had that for quite a few years. It's coming up now saying that there's a fan failure. So I may upgrade that to a Ubiquiti um, PoE switch, but that's something different. So let me go ahead and get this hooked up. Now there is one thing I, I'm not really a fan of. You have to have a Ubiquiti account when you set this up. So you'll have to create a Ubiquity account. It's free, doesn't cost anything. Um, but that is how you connect to the controller. It has a built-in, that's another thing, it has a built-in Ubiquity controller. So it will manage all of my um, access points. So let me get this taken care of and um, get it set up and I'll be on my computer. We'll see how we get this thing going. Hi, Mac. And I'm going to be using Chrome. That's the best to use for this. Um, if you just bought your Dream Machine, it's brand new. You should have a quick start guide in it. Um, if not, you can go online and go to, uh, uh, you can just Google uh, Ubiquity uh, Dream Machine quick start guide and it, it's easy to find. So when you pull it out of the box, it, it only comes with two things, the power cord and the dream machine. On the bottom of it, in the very center, there's a little pin or a little button right in the middle. If you hold that for 10 seconds, that does a full factory reset. So if you get one that you bought on eBay or something like that, I'd recommend doing a full reset just in case there's not something on the uh, router that you don't want. So anyhow, you can go online and get the app and for um, Android or um, Apple. And uh, you can configure it through that, or you can go through, I like going through a browser, it's just so much easier. Um, so plug it in and then connect the WAN port to your ISP or your cable modem or whatever your ISP has or a router and then connect up any WAN ports that you might, or LAN, LAN ports uh, connections that you might have. Once you get that done, you get into your browser. Oops. Uh, go to 192.168.1.1. That is the default IP. And it should come up just like this. It's going to check to make sure it has a WAN connection. If it doesn't, you won't be able to continue. Uh, that's one thing about this is you have to have a UI.com account, a Ubiquity uh account uh, it's for security and it also has a two-factor security built into it so once you have that and it sees that you have a WAN connection you go ahead and hit set up UDM give it a name I'm gonna name mine spin home UDM spin home I'm gonna agree to the service and agreement go ahead and start it mine's personal uh, I am going to run a business on it. Um, I might want to. Hmm. Yeah, none of these work. So I'm just going to keep personal. Shouldn't make a difference on what on how it's configured. Uh, go ahead and click next. And then this is your UI account. Now you can go into create new accounts. One thing I don't like about it is you got to have a UI account. Um, you can skip, but uh, I. I don't think you can really get everything working. I haven't tried it without one. If you can get by without one, go for it. Uh, but this also gives you access. Uh, you'll have the Ubiquity controller and anything that you have through Ubiquity, uh, you'll have access to. So it, it's just, and the two-factor authentication. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in. And there's a tooth factor authentication. Uh, now, if you Android or Apple have UI.com set up in your password 
uh, keeper thing, uh, you can go into that. I know with Apple that you can go in to the password in the settings and then go to passwords, find your UI account, and it has um, two-factor authentication already built into it. So you'll see the verification code rotating right there in on your phone. So you just put in the latest code and you're done. You're authenticated. Uh, I want to go ahead and keep the updates, update schedule as it is. I've, I've actually updated this one and then wiped it out so that I can show you how to configure it. And then I'm going to put my SSID. I'm going to config, I'm going to change a few things on this. Uh, I am not going to do diagnostics and performance. I'm going to leave that blank. And it's going to do a speed test. Now, I'm running on um, T-Mobile's cellular home internet. And sometimes I get up to four or 500 megs per second. Uh, so I don't complain about T-Mobile uh, high-speed internet. I, I really enjoy it. I used to be on Cox, and I was paying for uh, what they called Gigablast. And I, I wasn't even using it all. So this is only like $55 a month. And But what I want to do is this right here, what this does is this tries to um, throttle your communications based on their speed. I don't want it to throttle at all. I'm going to come in here and make this 1,000. As though I got a gigabit connection with 100 megs up. So 1,000 and 100. That way, I can max out uh, my connection. I can let the uh, router max out as much as it needs. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Next. And you can see it says Dallas, Texas. For me, I'm actually in Oklahoma City. I'm going to change that. Go ahead, Oklahoma City. Hit Finished. Now it's going to go ahead and set up the router. It would normally, once it's done with this, it would go into updating the, uh, I think it'll actually reboot. Then you have to log in and then it will do a, an update if it needs it. I already updated everything and then cleared it. So it should be fine. Now, I don't run a private network of 192.168. Uh, I always run, for my home network, a 10.0.1 network. Um, that's just me. Now, when I set up the IoT network, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably keep that at 192.168. I don't have any of my IoT devices are... Um, what it, uh, reserved IP addresses. Okay, so this is it going back in. I can go ahead and log in with my um, UI account. Of course, it's going to ask for two-factor authentication again. I want to remember this, so I can just look on my phone. Now I'm logged in. There we go. So I went up into this box up here, selected my network that I'm can set up on. So this is the dashboard. So what we want to do first is we need to change my main network. So we're going to go down here into settings right here. Go to networks. Go to LAN. Go to advanced and you have this right here turned on auto scale network this automatically scales the network for the device which i don't want it to do so if i turn that off you see now i have my network that um, 
it's going to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm changing this to 10.0.1.1. That's my gateway of slash 24. And my subnet is going to be .2. Actually, I'm going to leave a few. Leave a few. I'm going to leave that dot six like that. It had it to 254. And then DHCP name server is going to stay auto. So I'm going to apply my changes. HCP range start. Oh, <laughs> got to change my subnet. 10.0.1.6. 10.0.1.1. .1.254. Much better. Could have hit auto configure. It'll do that for me. So now save it. So now my subnet's now up to date. Everything on my network, if I had anything that was uh, static to the 10.1.10.0.1 network, it should now connect. If I go back here to uh, clients, where are they at? Client devices. I now see all these client devices that are connected to 192.168.1. They should start changing and reconnecting. As you can see, they're all grayed out, most of them, because the um, router has changed the subnet. All right, so. I'm waiting to adopt the last access point and uh, I've already taken care of the other ones. So now uh, if I look at clients, I still have a few clients and I can bump these clients and then have them reconnect. It should, there you go, reconnect this guy. I'm going to get everything off the network that's still on this 192.168. That, that is the basic setup. You want all your access points configured, got your IP address set up, you got your uh, Dream Machine set up, get the basics, get on Wi-Fi. So if I... Uh, bring up a browser. I'm going to bring up another browser. And I want to go to YouTube. So I can get to YouTube. So that, but that's wired. Because I have on my, on my um, Mac, I have wired and, and wireless. So let's bring up Wi-Fi and make sure that if I go ahead and connect to the John Wi-Fi network, and then disconnect my uh, wire, I can click on any one of these. And as you can see, I can uh, still navigate. This is through Wi-Fi, and this is through the Dream Machine. So if I do a speed test, I can run a speed test. Let's see how it looks. Well, that looks like crap. But let's change my server. Let's go, let's stop this. <clears throat> stop, go back. Do my speed test. Let's, I want to change my server to somewhere local. Uh, let's see, T-Mobile. I wanted something in Oklahoma. There we go. 
Uh, Oklahoma City. We'll use Cox. Let's give that a try. Definitely should get better bandwidth than that, but I'll mess with that later because that's seriously bad. <laughs> I mean, when your upload is more than your download, yeah, that's not, uh, not very good at all. Let me see if I do Wi-Fi on my phone and see what I get. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know what's wrong with my computer. So let's change. Let's plug my wire back in. Disable Wi-Fi. Let's make sure that this is not just a Wi-Fi problem. <clears throat> Same place. Yeah, that's not. It's not good at all. I mean, that's great speed right there. Four hundred and twenty-two megabits per second. If I connect directly to, if I connect to T-Mobile Wi-Fi, that's 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 connecting directly to the T-Mobile gateway. Two hundred, two fifty. 300 yeah I'm not I'm doing that's really nice speed sixty megabits per second up so if I change to the actual tree machine, I don't know, I might have a bad, no, no, there it goes. I don't know, it just may have just been a weird connection, but uh, 300 megabits per second Wi-Fi, uh, 802.11ac, that's pretty dang all good, 344 megabits per second. So just to be sure, let's disconnect the uh, wired connection. So if we change Wi-Fi back to T-Mobile, Hundred and fifty, hundred and sixty, hundred and seventy, hundred and seventy megabits per second. Pretty good upload speed, that's for sure. So let's change this to now this is the, this is the Wi-Fi speed on the Dream Machine. Uh, I think this thing might have a well, maybe not. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, this is the Dream Machine Wi-Fi. I don't, I don't know why it gives a really sporadic connection, but uh, 400 megs, that's not too bad. And that's Wi-Fi on the Dream Machine. So now we have the basics set up. We got the basics configured. And now we're ready to um, now we're ready to start configuring the separate network. So if we go back to there's our there's our topology. We can actually if we go into settings and actually go into the settings of the controller. And look at topology it gives us every device that's connected and all kinds of stats everything that's going on so what we need to do now is we need to go in and configure another network so we can configure another here another LAN well we're going to call this IOT and it's going to have a separate VLAN. We're going to turn off scaling and its IP address is going to be 10.0.2.1. That's going to be its gateway slash 24. Six to two dot two fifty four. The HCP is going to be the same. And doesn't it's not going to use a VPN. So we want to make sure we have a separate VLAN ID. We're going to make this VLAN ID two because the other one. The main one is VLAN ID 1. And add network. So now we have a separate network on this router. It's called IoT. So we can go up into Wi Fi and we can create a new Wi Fi network. Load this. That was strange. New Wi Fi network. We're going to call this IoT. Give it a password. And we're going to assign this to IoT network. And it's only going to be 2.4 gigahertz. And this is going to be optimized for IoT Wi Fi. And it's going to be available on all my access points. I'm going to make sure roaming is turned off. I don't want to be roaming. Connect high performance clients. Uh, five member goods. Uh, we're not going to mess with that. And let's see. Security is 802 uh, WPA2 WPA, WPA3. And that's it. We're going to go ahead and add the Wi-Fi network. Now, on my other Wi-Fi network, we need to make sure we change security on this because they always put WPA2. I put WPA2 and 3. Okay, where's... What in the world just happened? I think the Wi-Fi network is like re resetting when I change the encryption. I, I bounced off the Wi-Fi network. 
Probably because it dropped. And now it's coming back up. So back to settings. There's my Wi-Fi networks. I got the encryption set up. The last thing I need to do is I need to make sure that these two networks do not do uh, inter VLAN communications. So I go into security and I create a new rule. No IOT to land. So I want to block. Local network. IOT. I think I want IOT. To and from all local networks. All devices. That's what I want. So I want IOT not to be able to talk, not to be able to talk to any of the local networks. Add rule. So now, to test this, I can go and bring up my. So let's see if I have. Uh, let's see if I have some clients. There's some clients. So. If I take my self and put it in, I, I'm putting my workstation into the IoT network. Do I have Google? Can I go to Facebook? Yep. So I got internet, but can I ping 10.0.1.49? No, I cannot. That's good. So now I can't talk between these two networks, but I can uh, hit the network. So anything that I put into IoT stays in IoT, doesn't go anywhere else. The other thing, uh, let me get out of here, go back into here. So we already we already we we were already able to establish. Um, oh, let me get back onto my network. We already we were already able to establish that this guy. We don't have to worry about uh, putting in a VLAN ID. It's our main LAN. So it's already, it's like VLAN zero, I guess you want to call it. I don't know, VLAN one. But IoT is in VLAN two. So they're separated by VLANs. VLANs are separate broadcast domains. They're separate networks. So um, in a normal switched environment, they won't be able to talk to each other unless you put rules in there to allow them. But even though some of these devices say they don't talk, uh, on some of them, you can actually ping between the two networks if you create two Wi-Fi networks because they don't establish a VLAN on them. This actually does. So the other thing is um, what we were talking about. I think it was VPNs. Yeah, so the other thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on for my wife or for me, if any of us could travel, is... VPNs. And I want to be able to have a simple TCP uh, IPsec VPN. And here's your shared secret. I, I can actually get pretty. Yeah, we only want to do a simple VPN. I want to apply that. So now we have a VPN, a VPN created for the LAN that my wife can use. 
to actually connect to the internet. Uh, I can create a user. There she is. Create mine. Save it. And so now the next thing I want to do is I need to test it. So I got to find. The Ubiquity VPN client. So I don't know if they have this for. I'm on a Mac. My wife would also be on a Mac. So I need to. Hmm. I have to, I might have to toy with this a little bit All right, for Mac. Ubiquity Unify using VPN. I don't know. I'm going to have to toy with this and find a client to use on a Mac. Um, I don't want something that's going to cost something. You'd figure Ubiquity would offer um, something. So I'm going to have to I'm going to have to dig a little bit. But anyhow. That's pretty much all there is to it, setting up the Dream Machine, setting it up with uh, access points that you have. Now, you can, now I can look at statistics. Before I had the Ubiquity Unify controller, and um, it was software. If you didn't run it 24-7, the statistics would be gone uh, as soon as you closed out the software. Now this is going to run and keep stats all the time because the controller is the dream machine and it's on 24 seven. This thing even has a traffic inspector that tells you what kind of traffic is going on uh, back and forth to clients. You can open this up to see what's been going on, who's been talking. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty detailed. Uh, I like it. Uh, let's see. Wi-Fi Insights just tells you everybody, all of your devices and who they're talking to. What devices they're connecting. So I have, like, if, if I've got this devices up here that still have a 192.168 address, these Sonos, I can come back in here. Look for the Sonos devices. And try to see what it's what is it uh, what's connected to it. Or what it's connecting to. I don't because I don't know. Go poke seventeen. Oh. These are other Wi-Fi networks that aren't uh, that GoPoke 17 is uh, across the street. That's one of the neighbors. And it, that's pretty much it. If you got any questions, hit me up. Uh, this, this is going to be some stuff that I still have to learn with uh with what i have going on with this i still got to figure out the vpn client if i figure it out i'll, I'll uh, edit the text 
to see what uh, what we're going to have to use as a VPN client. But the VPN is now set up, and it's using my uh, IP address. Well, see, that's I just remembered that. So the v, or I just thought about it. The VPN client that I set up here. Uh, where are you? Networks. This VPN client, this IP address ain't going to work because that IP address is coming from uh, my T-Mobile. What I'm going to have to do is I might have to set up some kind of like dynamic DNS or something because the IP address that IP address is not a public IP. So, because what I have is I have the T-Mobile gateway. It has it has a public IP that T-Mobile is supplying to it. Then it has a private address in the back that my Dream Machine is connected to. So this is the gateway on the T-Mobile gateway, not on the public side. So I got to figure that out. I probably have to use advanced and then use this remote access. I have to try to, I, I'm, it's going to be some, uh, specify how I use in clients. Hmm. Because the way I've set up that it may not work. I might have to figure something else out. Because you can't, it does, looks like you can't change the IP address. Uh -uh. So, I wonder if the T-Mobile Gateway has some sort of, maybe the T-Mobile Gateway might have some way of uh, doing a v VPN. I don't know, I'll have to look. But the way I'm configured, this VPN may not work for me. But anyhow, if you guys have any questions, concerns, go ahead and hit me up and uh, follow. I'll talk to you later.